Saturday morning, man. Uh, beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. Uh, you couldn't ask for a nicer day. Uh, I am headed to Best Buy to get me some earbuds. I need some earbuds, man. Uh, mine are on a last leg. I'm tired of the cords and shit, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to go up here and see what I can find. But uh, anyway, guys, I wanted to talk a little football while I was driving. Y'all know me. I got to say something about the Dallas Cowboys. I just can't. I can't wake up in the morning without talking Dallas Cowboys. Uh, obviously, you probably already know that they hired another defensive coordinator. Actually, he was a defensive coordinator with the Vikings, uh, George Edwards. Uh, Y'all know their defense is pretty good. So I don't know too much about the guy. So I'm not going to sit up here and act like I know every nook and cranny about this guy. But uh, the Vikings have a pretty good defense. They've been pretty successful through the years uh, recently. So uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to work with and under Mike Nolan. And you know Mike Nolan's a 3-4 guy. I hope we transition over to the 3-4 defense. I've, I've said it. I've stressed it over and over and over how this team, especially this defense, needs a change. Uh, if you're going to change coaching staff, you might as well change the scheme. You might as well do it. Um, I, I believe the 3-4 is a perfect defense for a young, um, deep, fresh defense and um, uh, just a different look, man, 3-4 under, 3-4 over, uh, and it'll force us to, uh, like I said in my last video, it'll force us to have to draft a dog, a 300, or find a dog in free agency, somebody that's over 300 pounds with a big belly, big nasty gut and just sloppy and just get in the way on purpose, not even on, you know, just get in the way. You know, don't even have to do too much. Just get in the way. A Warren Sapp type uh, nose tackle. And uh, you can do a lot of versatile things with 3-4, um, you know, so it, it, I, I just think we should go that route. Um, and we, we should draft accordingly. But um, this team last season, as much as they need to change on defense, uh, the, here's the stat. This team last season was ranked number 11th in, in yards allowed, which was unbelievable. I thought it was. I thought we were worse than that. Uh, a little bit over 5,000, 5,232, I believe, and uh, ranked ninth overall in points allowed, 20 points per, per game. That's too much. Uh, I want to. I want to be ranked number one. Uh, I want to at least be in the top five. But you know me, I'm a defensive guy. I want to be ranked number one. So uh, bringing this guy, I hope he can help out the situation. Uh, working under Mike Nolan. Mike, Mike Nolan is supposed to be this defensive guru. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Mike McCarthy, actually, is trying to uh, cover all his tracks. He's trying to make sure that this team, still kind of young team, especially the defense, has the right guidance, has the right parents coaching because apparently uh, it's been too sour too long. You know, if you look at the history of this team in the past, we've always had a pretty good offense, but no defense, you know, uh, especially when we had Romo. We had, shit, 2014, we had offense, 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 but we had no defense. Uh, you know, 2016, once again, high-powered offense. We were scoring right up, and we had an okay defense, but it, it, it wasn't balanced. Uh, hell, 2017, 18, same thing, you know, and uh, we, we got some key components to the defense but they just don't know what to do they haven't been knowing what to do and um, I think Mike McCarthy is trying to at least get some balance if we're going to have a high powered offense with Ezekiel Elliott base it off the run game and have Dak Prescott throwing for you know 300 yards a game uh, we might as well have a good defense to back it up so they can continue so the offense can continue to be successful three and out offense back on the field the, uh, milk the clock run the ball with Zeke pass over the top to Cooper, Gallup, you know, Jarwin, whomever, Cobb, if we're going to keep Cobb, you know, whomever, man. So uh, you got to have a balance. Look at the teams in the Super Bowl. They have a balanced team. They have a balanced team, man. Look at the Chiefs, balance. High-powered offense, uh, pretty good defense. Look at the 49ers, uh, high-powered defense, and uh, pretty good offense, you know. Look look, look what uh, Garoppolo did last week. I mean, yeah, what was it, last week? Uh, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't have over a hundred yards pass. I think he had like seventy something yards passing, and the running back had over two. I think two thirty, two forty or something like that. Two twenty. 
yards rushing and four touchdowns. So that lets you know a defense defense wins games, defense wins championship, and also with a running game too, a strong running game and a good offensive line. Um, but that, that those are just my thoughts on that, man. Um, let me know what y'all think about that. But I wanted to get into Byron Jones real quick. Byron Jones, um, should we keep him or should we let him go? I, I'm a little iffy about Byron Jones. I've always been iffy about Byron Jones because, I, I, you know, I'm a defensive guy. I keep saying that a million times. I know y'all get tired of saying it. Hear me say that. Um, you know, playing the cornerback position on different levels, you know, growing up in the school and, you know, things like that, college, uh, arena football. Um, I know a little something about the position. And uh, Byron Jones just doesn't cut, cut the mustard for me as being a playmaking type cornerback. Uh, he's an okay cover guy. Uh, but at times when he's tested, they catch the ball on him, you know, and then there's times where he shut down the receiver. But, you know, it, it, he doesn't – he's not one of those guys where an a, a offensive coordinator would change their whole scheme around who shuts down one side of the field. Can you honestly say Byron Jones, like, is a real threat to be able to shut down one side of the field and, and and if 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 the quarterback does throw that way in his direction, he makes him pay. I can't say that. I, I, I really can't. I think you can find. I like Byron Jones. Don't get me wrong. He's an average cover guy. He's a, he, no. I'm not gonna say average. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt because he's transitioned from safety to cornerback, back to you know whatever. And um, he had he got a total of 349 tackles and just two interceptions, guys, in his career. He's been with us since 2015. And he's only got two interceptions, man. I don't like that. I like picks. I like uh, game changers. I like guys to come in like Deion Sanders used to do and suck the life out of an offense because they had enough sack to try to throw in his direction and he made them pay. I like guys like that. I don't like guys that just every now and then maybe bat a ball down, don't know how to go after the ball, don't know how to look back for the ball. They just happen to be there and, oh, oh, good, he made a stop on third down. You know, I don't like that. I, I like consistency, man. So um, two two interceptions in your career, that's not good enough for me. I think you can draft a guy in the in the draft, hell, 2020 draft, that can have those same attributes, you know, and that can be at least coached up. Byron Jones is a hell of an athlete. You know, he's a hell of a guy. He's a good guy on and off the field, a positive guy. And I wouldn't mind keeping him, but uh, – you can easily draft a guy that's, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about paying, you know, <laughs> right right now. And um, my bad, I'm trying to get on. Uh, you don't have to worry about paying right now. And uh, they can do the same things, you know what I'm saying? And probably have a little bit more playmaking ability ability and coached, uh, coached up. See, Byron Jones was in that Marinelli, uh, 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 Chris Rashad scheme. You get what I'm saying? So he wasn't shown uh, how to play on the ball. You get what I'm saying? So maybe you can draft a young guy in here and go ahead and show him how to do that. And he'll, this new coaching staff, this defensive coordinator, this assistant, George Edwards from the Vikings, uh, Mike Nolan with the defensive coordinator, uh, maybe they can show him different, you know. So I think Byron Jones can be drafted this season, I mean, this uh, in, in the upcoming draft in 2020 uh, this year. Uh, but let me know what y'all think. I might be wrong. I'm not always right. I'm not trying to be right. This is an opinion, opinionated channel, you know what I'm saying, where your opinion matters. I'm not on here like the mother cow. Oh, I know everything. Everything comes out of my mouth. My boo-boo doesn't stink, you know. You know, I'm so tired of that, man. But anyway, guys, make sure you stay cowboyed up and prayed up because you never know what the day is going to bring you. All the back at your boy. I'm out. And the only thing else I got to say is, how about them cowboys? Yeah!